And here is where we started our project in the middle of nowhere. And if you zoom in a bit, you can see that all of this area is divided into strips that go over different types of soil. And we were actually monitoring, measuring every single tree in this 2,000 hectares, 5,000 acres. And this forest is quite different. What I really did was I just followed nature. And nature doesn't know monocultures, but a natural forest has multi-layers. That means that both in the ground and above the ground, it can make better use of the available light. It can store more carbon in the system. It can provide more functions, but it's more complicated. It's not that simple, and you have to work with the people. So what we do is also, just like nature, we grow fast planting trees, and underneath that, we grow the slower growing primary rainforest trees of a very high diversity that can optimally use that light. And then, what is just as important, get the right fungi in there that will grow into those leaves, bring back the nutrients to the roots of the trees that have just dropped that leaf within 24 hours. And they become like nutrient pumps. And you need the bacteria to fix nitrogen. And without those microorganisms, you won't have any performance at all. And then we started planting, only a thousand trees a day. We could have planted many, many more, but we didn't want to because we wanted to keep the number of jobs stable. We didn't want to lose the people that uh, are going uh, to work in that plantation. And we do a lot of work here. We use indicator plants to look what soil types or what vegetables will grow, but what trees will grow here. And we have monitored every single one of those trees from space. This is what it looks like in real. You have this irregular ring around it with strips of 100 meter wide with sugar palms that can provide income for 648 families. It's only a small part of the area. The nursery in here is quite different. If you look at the number of tree species we have in Europe, for instance, from the Ural up to England, you know how many? 165. In this nursery, we are going to grow 10 times more the number of species. Can you imagine? You do need to know what you are working with. But it's that diversity which makes it work, that you can go from this zero situation by planting the vegetables and the trees, or directly the trees in the lines in that grass there, putting up that buffer zone, producing your compost, and then making sure that at every stage of that upgrowing forest, there are crops that can be used. In the beginning, maybe pineapples and beans and corn. In the second phase, there will be bananas and papayas. Later on, there will be chocolate and chilies. And then slowly, the trees start taking over, bringing in produce from the fruits, from the timber, from the fuel wood. And finally, the sugar palm forest takes over and provides the people with permanent income. On the top left, underneath those green stripes, you see some white dots. Those are actually individual pineapple plants that you can see from space. And in that area, we started growing some uh, acacia trees that you just saw before. So this is after one year, and this is after two years. And that's green. If we look from the tower, this is when we start attacking the grass. We plant in the seedlings, mixed with the bananas, the papayas, all the crops for the local people. But the trees are growing up fast in between as well. And three years later, 137 species of birds are living here. So we lowered the air temperature, 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. The air humidity is up 10%. Cloud cover, I'm going to show it to you, is up. Rainfall is up, and all these species and income. This eco lodge that I built there three years before was an empty yellow field. This transponder we operate with the European Space Agency that gives us the benefit that every satellite that comes over to calibrate itself is taking a picture. Those pictures we use to analyze how much carbon, how the forest is developing, and we can monitor every tree using that satellite images through our cooperation. But we can use these data now to provide other regions with recipes and the same technology. You actually have it already with Google Earth. If you, had, you would use a little bit of your technology to put tracking devices in trucks and use Google Earth in combination with that, you could directly tell what palm oil has been sustainably produced, which company is stealing the timber. And you could save so much more carbon than with any yeah, measure of saving energy here. So this is the Sambodja area. You measure how the trees grow back. 
but you can also measure the biodiversity coming back. And biodiversity is an indicator of how much water can be balanced, how many uh, medicines can be kept here. And finally, I made it into the rain machine because this forest is now creating its own rain. This nearby city of Balikpapan has a big problem with water. It's for 80% surrounded by seawater and we have now a lot of intrusion there. Now we looked at the clouds above this forest. So we looked at the reforestation area, semi-open area and open area. And look at these images. Yeah, I just run them very quickly through. In the tropics, raindrops are not formed from ice crystals like is the case in the temperate zones. You need the trees with mycists, chemicals that come out of the leaves of the trees that initiate the raindrops. So you create a cool place where clouds can accumulate and you have the trees to initiate the rain. And look, there's now 11.2% more clouds. That was already after three years. If you look at the rainfall, it was already up 20% at that time. But let's look at the next year. And you can see that that trend is continuing. Where first we had a small cap of higher rainfall, that cap is now widening and getting higher. And if we look at the rainfall pattern above Samboja Lestari, it used to be the driest place. But now you see consistently a peak of rain forming there. So you can actually change the climate. When there are trade winds, of course, the effect disappears. But afterwards, as soon as the wind stabilizes, you see that again the rainfall peaks come back above this area. So to say it is hopeless is not the right thing to do, because we actually can make the difference if you integrate the various technologies. And it's nice of the science, but it still depends mostly upon the people, on your education. We have our pharma schools. But the real success, of course, is our band, because if a baby is born, we will play, so everyone's our family, and you don't make trouble with your family. This is how it looks. We have this road going around the area, which brings the people electricity and water from our own area. We have the zone with the sugar palms, and then we have this fence with very thorny palms to keep the orangutans that we provide with a place to live in the middle and the people apart. And inside we have this area for reforestation as a gene bank to keep all that material alive because for the last 12 years not a single seedling of the tropical hardwood trees has grown up because the climatic triggers have disappeared. All the seeds get eaten. So now we do the monitoring on the inside from towers, satellites, ultralights. Each of the families that have sold their land now get a piece of land back. And it has those nice fences of tropical hardwood trees. You have the shade trees planted in year one. Then you underplant it with the sugar palms and you plant this thorny fence. And after a few years, you can remove some of those shade trees. The people get that acacia timber, which we have preserved with the bamboo peel. And they can build a house. They have some fuel wood to cook with. And they can start producing from the trees as many as they like. They have enough income for three families. But whatever you do in that program, it has to be fully supported by the people, meaning that you also have to adjust it to the local cultural values. There is no simple one recipe for one place. You also have to make sure that it is very difficult to corrupt, that it's transparent. Like here in Samboja Lestari, we divide that ring in groups of 20 families. If one member trespasses the agreement and does cut down trees, the other 19 members have to decide what's going to happen to him. If the group doesn't take action, the other 33 groups have to decide what is going to happen to the group who doesn't comply with those great deals that we are offering them. In North Sulawesi, it is the cooperative. They have a democratic culture there. So there you can use the local justice system to protect your system. So in summary, if you look at it, in year one, the people can sell their land, they get income, but they get jobs back in the construction, in the reforestation, working with the orangutans, they can use the waste wood to make handicraft, they also get free land in between the trees where they can grow their crops, they can now sell part of those fruits to the orangutan project, they get building materials for houses, a contract for selling the sugar so we can produce huge amounts of ethanol and energy locally, they get all these other benefit environmentally money they get education it's a great deal and everything is based upon that one thing make sure that forest remains there so if we want to help the orangutans 
what I actually set out to do, we must make sure that the local people are the ones that benefit. And I think the real key to doing it, to give a simple answer, is integration. I hope if you want to know more, you can read more. <laughs>